Moving on to example two in section 9.1. Suppose we have a box full of a mixture of red and white beans. We want to know the true proportion of red beans in the box. We gather a small scoop of beans and count out how many there are of each color. We count 30 red beans and 90 white beans. And to help you out, I have a little link here. So bit.ly ly um, slash bean hyphen box. I'll show you the link one more time. There, bit.ly slash um, bean hyphen box. And I have these pictures from right on my desk, right here where I'm making this video. And this is a box full of beans. And there's the white beans and the red beans. And then there's our scoop. You can see how little the scoop is in comparison to the box. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what in the world? Why do I care about beans in a box? You don't. Um, the thing is that it's a metaphor. So suppose this is your group that you're looking at and the red ones are all the ones that have a disease or say are susceptible to cervical cancer or say um, are the ones that would vote for uh, Romney in the next election or they're the ones that would oppose same-sex marriage or whatever, right? Something like that. So the red beans are representing the people that you're interested in. Speaking of which, that's the first thing they say is what is the box? Well, the box is the population, right? And just on a little side note, um, because when I taught this in class, some students had forgotten that the population size is equal to capital N. So it's the amount of beans in the whole box altogether. All right, then the scoop of beans represents a sample. Okay, so what was our sample size? The total number of beans in our sample. And then what is its mathematical symbol? Well, that was N, which was 120, right? So we had 120 beans in our box, or excuse me, in our scoop. And I get that by taking 30 plus 90, which makes 120 total. Right? So we had 120 beans. The total number of red beans was X, which was 30. So that's all we're interested in there is 30. And its mathematical symbol is x. Now the parameter we're trying to estimate is p, which is the population value, right? The population proportion, if you will, of all um, red beans in the box. So let me type that up. There you go. So it's the population proportion of red beans in the entire box. And of course, remember, it's a metaphor for a sample of a population. So you're thinking, what proportion of people are, um, I don't know, going to come down with anemia? What proportion of people are going to have breast cancer? What proportion of, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What is your best estimate for what the proportion of red beans in the box is? Well, you'd have to use your scoop, and your scoop tells you that it is p hat, which is x over n, which we know is 30 over 120, which is 0 0.25. So 0 0.25 is our p hat. That's our best guess. It's called the point estimate, right? the single best guess. Now, do we know the actual value of the population red beans? No, we do not. Right, because that would require us to pot to poll, if you will, the entire box, and we didn't do that. So, no, we don't know the actual proportion because we did not sample the entire box, and no sample is perfect, right? Because of sampling error, right? Section 1.5 sampling error, right? All samples are going to be a little bit off, right? But we do think that p is close to p hat, right? We don't know how close, but we think so, right? That's the whole point of what we're doing. We're taking our point estimate and we're saying that we think that the population value is close to that point estimate. So we're going to build windows, if you will, intervals, ranges, right? from our sample statistics. So you're going to take your sample value of p hat and you're going to build from it in an interval and you think that your unknown parameter p is somehow in there. So you're going to create a window of possible values for where you think that parameter is going to fall. That's the general gist of it. So the sample statistics we've used are p hat, which is x over n. So you take p hat and then you, mail, you build an interval from it and you think p is going to fall in that interval.
In section 9.2, we're going to take x bar, we're going to build an interval from x bar, and then we think that mu will fall in that interval, mu being the population mean, p being proportion. And then in section 9.3, we're going to take standard deviation or variance, the sample standard deviation, the sample variance, and we're going to build intervals, and then we think that the population standard deviation will fall on that interval or the population variance. That's the whole idea behind confidence intervals. You take your single statistic, your p hat, your x bar, your s, your s squared, and you build a window a range of values called an interval, and then you think that these population values fall in that interval, but you don't know for sure because you can never get everybody.